One of the new features added to the RAD grid view for WinForms in the Q2 2009 release is data validation. Data validation enables you to take complete control over the data, data entered into your grid cells. The data validation is controllable through events rather than expressions, and it automatically comes with visual cues that inform your user when data is valid or when data is invalid. Let's take a look at how this works today in Visual Studio 2008. What I have loaded on the screen here is a standard Visual Studio 2008 WinForms project. Today we'll be using C Sharp. That'll, the features, of course, work in VB as well. And I've dragged and dropped onto my form a RAD grid view, a Q2 2009 RAD grid view. And I've bound it to a very simple data set that pulls data from the employees table in the AdventureWorks database. And if I run this right now, just to give you context of what we're starting with, I'll hit Control F5. And our application, when I'm focused correctly, will load up. And here's what our application looks like. It's just a standard grid view bound to all the data. You can see it's very performant, just as is, from the employees table in AdventureWorks. And what I'm going to show you today is how we can add data validation using the built-in features to the RAD grid view for, let's say, the gender column of this table. Now, right now, I can come in here and change this value to anything I'd like. Maybe I change this gender to H. Uh, maybe I change this gender to J. And you see that I'm being allowed to put in what should be invalid values to the gender column. We can prohibit this by taking advantage of the built-in data validation features and events in the Q2 grid. Let's see how that works. So I'm going to come to my RAD grid view. I'm going to hit F4 to show the properties window. And in the properties window, you see we have a cell validating event now. And if I scroll that into view, you can see it here. And if I double click on this, it'll create a handler for me in my code behind for cell validating. And what we want to do in the cell validating event is look at the value that's been entered and determine whether or not it's valid using whatever logic we choose to implement. And if it's invalid, we need to set some error text. If it is valid, we need to clear the error text. So I have a snippet I'm going to paste in here that I'll narrate to you. Essentially what this snippet's doing is I'm getting from my event arguments. You see my event arguments are of type cell validating event args. Let me give you a little more screen real estate. I'm getting the reference to the column that comes in through that. And then from the event arguments as well, I'm validating to make sure, I'm checking to make sure, I don't want to overuse the word validation, I'm checking to make sure that the row is a grid view data row, first of all, grid view data row info type, making sure that the column is not null, and then I can decide, okay, which field do I want to validate? In this case, I'm choosing to validate against the gender field. I could pick any field name here, or I could leave this step out altogether and use a switch statement perhaps to validate a number of different fields. So in this case, I've specified that if the field name equals gender, I want to enter into my validation logic. I then just grab the value that's been entered from the event args again, e.value. And just for saving myself some casting throughout this code, I'm grabbing a reference to the row as well, the grid view data row info. And then I perform some simple data validation. If the value entered is empty, is a string null or empty, then I cancel the entry, which does not allow the user to move on to the next cell or to leave the current row until the validation error has been fixed. So I'll set e.cancel equals true, and I'll set the row's error text, so the grid view data row info error text, to whatever my error message needs to be. In this case, I'm going to say a gender value is required. I'm going to perform another validation step, and I'm going to say that if the value entered is not f or m, then that's also not a valid value in this case. I'm going to set e.cancel equals true again, and I'm going to set the error text in this case to gender must be m or f. And then if it doesn't meet e either of those criteria, I'm going to assume the entry is valid, and I'm going to set my error text string entry to nothing. I'm going to clear out my error text. And by doing that, I'm going to hide any validation UI to my users. So that's my code in the cell validating event. Now let's run our application again and see what this does to our entry. Hit Control F5. Our application loads again. I'll bring this into view for you. And now when I try to change the value in the gender column, let's perhaps try to change this again from M to H. And then I'll try to click to the next row. Notice that it does not allow me to click to the next row. I can't leave this row. In fact, I can't even tab to the next cell or click on the next cell. And to the far left, we see an automatic UI that's been added indicating that there's an error with this row. And if I hover my mouse over that, we see the text that's been supplied. And that text comes directly from the error text we set in the cell validating event. And I'm being told that gender must be M or F. And if I cleared this value, I'd be told first that gender is required. So you can see it's evaluated in order, and that error text is updated to display what the user needs to do. So in this case, if I reset this to M, 
then I'm allowed to move on past that cell or edit other cells within my role within my row. Now, because this is event driven, it works for any editor, not just the text box. So any editor within your columns can then be interpreted through the validating event and you can display an error message appropriately. There's another event that's also related here, and that's the row validating event. While we can validate per cell using cell validating, we can do the same thing per row using row validating. So let's go back to our form. And this time, let me hit properties again, and let's handle the row validating event. Scroll down, double click to create my handler. And row validating is going to be very similar to cell validating, only instead of getting an individual cell in the event arguments, we're getting an entire row. So what I'm going to do then here instead is get a reference to the row. So I'll say var row equals e dot row. And then we'll go ahead and cast this as a grid view data info row, I believe. Let me validate that. A grid view data row info. Got those last two words backwards. Row info. Now that we have access to our row, we don't need to go to that extra step that we did previously in cell validating to get access to that, but we can bring over most of the rest of our logic. So let's just start by making sure if row does not equal null to make sure that that much is true, then we can start doing our validation. So let me copy and paste this in here just for very quick demo purposes. Obviously, I don't encourage copying and pasting of code, so let me copy this and paste it in here. Now we obviously, we already have the reference to our row. We don't need to do that when we're using row validation. And our value this time, since we're not dealing with a specific cell, we have to decide which column do we want our value to come from. So we can then say row dot cells, and then we can either pass in the index to the cell we want to get the value from or pass in its name. So let's pass in its name, gender, and then grab the value. So that's one difference when we're using row validating. And then after that, everything is the same. I don't have to change any of this additional text. So we'll check once again if the value is empty for the cell gender. Uh, we'll check once again if it's F or M. And then if everything passes, we'll clear our error. And if I run this now, Control F5, it'll perform very similarly as we saw in the first demo, only this time that validation logic won't be executed until I try to change rows. So if I come back down here and try to change, again, gender from M, let's say, to H, I can also then tab on and work in other cells. Well, I can if I disable cell validation. So let's go back here and let's disable our cell validation. So I'm just going to comment this out. We'll comment that out. And now we'll run it so only our row validation is being applied to our data modifications. So now if we go in here, we try to change gender from M to H. You can see I can still tab on and edit the other cells within my row. But when I try to change rows, then I get my data validation error telling me that my gender must be M or F. And I cannot navigate to an additional row until I fix that error. Now, one of the advantages of using cell validation instead of row validation is that if I can't fix the error, if I decide I just don't want to keep my changes, I can simply hit escape to clear the problem when using cell validation. With row validation, I need to go back to the row and set it to a valid value before I can move on. So I'm going to change this to M solves the problem, and I can now move on to another row. So I tab out of that to make the value take, and now I can move past that. So that's row validation versus cell validation and the data validation feature in the Q2 2009 RAD grid view. For a more complete example of this, showing you a more uh, complex way of implementing per column validation using validation column information and applying a visual style to the column when it's not valid, check out the validation demos in the Q2 2009 RAD grid view quick start demo framework, and hopefully this quick introduction to this functionality will help you get started with it in Q2 2009.